Hi everyone, I'm Yin Xiao. Today, I'm going to give a simple introduction about quantum cascade laser. Quantum cascade laser is a semiconductor laser device that emits in the mid to far infrared portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. It is different from conventional lasers in terms of working principle and emitted photon wavelength. Why the name quantum cascade? Cascade refers to waterfall that flows in stages. It can also mean a process where information is successively passed on. This laser works by involving successive quantum effects analogous to a cascade waterfall, thus acquiring the name quantum cascade. The first quantum cascade laser was demonstrated by a team led by Jerome Feist and Federico Capasso at AT&T Bell Laboratories in 1994. Inside quantum cascade laser, the overall structure looks like conventional laser. However, the semiconductor crystal is no longer a pure active region. What is it then? The semiconductor crystal there is composed of super lattice, like combination of indium gallium arsenide and aluminium indium arsenide. Super lattice is a periodic structure of layers of two or more materials with only several nanometers thick. With super lattice, you can create multiple quantum wells of different sizes within a material because each layer is quantum sized. The quantum wells have finite potential barrier, meaning that the electron wave function exists outside each well. Quantum tunneling In quantum mechanics, the wave function of a particle can propagate through a barrier of certain potential and width even though the particle's energy is lower than the potential. In the multiple well scenario, it is possible that electrons tunnel from one well to another. Interestingly, the energy of the particle does not change after tunneling, but because the wave function can be reflected, the probability of finding the particle changes. The quantum cascade laser has a structure separated into two regions, injector region and the active region, alternating with each other. Thus, let us take a look at the injector region. It has multiple similar quantum wells connecting alongside one another. Its main role is to receive electron from one active site and allows the electron to tunnel throughout the whole region to another active site. Secondly, let us look at the active region. It is called active region because photons are released here. It comprises of three coupled quantum wells. We can visualize it as three 1D finite potential wells connected alongside each other diagonally in space. While there are many different systems, what we are discussing here is a three-level laser system. Note that the quantum well width can be different. The active region is engineered in a way such that it has two bounded energy states. But when a certain electric field or voltage is applied, the second energy level, which has a degeneracy, splits into two energy levels. This is known as Stark effect. Inter-subband transition is where electrons travel between energy levels within a single quantum well, changing its wave function and releasing extra energy. The active region is designed such that the wave function from the injector resonates with E3 of the first quantum well to ease tunneling. Then, electrons undergo inter-subband transition to the E2 in the second well. How does it do this? There are two ways. First, the electron tunnels to the E3 in the second well, then spontaneously relaxes to E2 due to its unstable condition, releasing a photon corresponding to the energy difference. Or the second way, the electron can first relax from E3 to E2, releasing photon first, then tunnel to the second well. It doesn't matter which path the electron goes through, the same photons are being emitted. Because the quantum well is also engineered such that the wave function in E2 in second wall coincides with the wave function in E1, the electrons can quickly tunnel to E1 in the third wall. Due to the energy difference, 
the electron relaxes in the process, releasing energy in the form of phonon, which is hit in lattice vibration. After all this happens, the electron tunnel to the injector region. This is the overview of the quantum wall configuration. We can imagine the electron starts off its journey from the top to the bottom of the steps, like this. You might have some questions. Why do we need the injector region? Well, this is to ensure smooth electron transfer. If electric field is altered, the efficiency of tunneling can be affected due to the change in resonant tunneling energy. However, the injector region acts as an electron reservoir and is still able to supply electrons, allowing the laser to work in a dynamic range of current while maintaining optical power. Second question. Why is the active region multiple weld and leveled? The main reason is to encourage population inversion, which is when higher energy population is larger than the lower energy population. In the active region, from level 2 to 1, electrons tunnel very fast due to non-radiative process, so level 2 tend to be unoccupied, triggering population inversion and radiative response between level 3 and 2. Some quantum cascade laser applications include gas sensing and measurement, medical diagnostics, and terror threat prevention. How is quantum cascade laser superior? First, by alternating the width of the super lattice and thus the width of the quantum well, the emission wavelength can be altered without changing material. Secondly, because one electron can be recycled multiple times to undergo multiple steps of photon emission, its efficiency is much higher. Thirdly, it can emit long wavelength photons not achievable by normal diode laser. Finally, it can detect gas particles up to parts per trillion, thus very high accuracy. Alright, this is the end of the video. If you've enjoyed it, press like and subscribe. Also, don't hesitate to comment below. Thank you. I hope this video piques your interest in lasers. Special thanks to Professor Kibun Kang from KAIST for providing this opportunity.